everybody, it's Angel from Halo Inspirations. We give you inspirations to help you spread beauty and joy through your quilting journey. Happy hump day. Whoop, whoop. Happy Wednesday to each of you. And as we've been discussing for a little bit, this is uh, another stitch for your crazy quilt. Gotta love the crazy quilt. Uh, it's the last one for a little bit. We've talked about this and we'll talk some more, but what is this week's stitch? It is the herring bone stitch. <sighs> there is so much you can do with this stitch. Oh my gosh. I think we could do like several videos on the herringbone stitch, right? But we're only going to do one because it's just an intro, okay? So <laughs> I promise you. Um, but we will talk about some things at the end. And yeah, what? let's stop chit-chatting, right? Let's learn how to do a herringbone stitch. I'll see you in just a sec. The next stitch is the herringbone stitch, as I have mentioned before. Now I am doing this on um, cross-stitch my cross stitch fabric it's a 25 count um so i am going to try and make it a little easier on myself by counting but you can practice any way that you like uh, but this just helps get the rhythm i'm actually going to go over eight one or no up eight one two three four five six seven eight and over four one two three four that's where i want to come out and you're, if you notice, I'm going in a diagonal and I'm going to want to, so you want to take a diagonal to it, but then you want to go over a little to take a small stitch. Okay. Get it in there. And oh, one more. Want to keep it equal. Yep. Okay. And then we'll just go ahead and pull through. And <clears throat> you want to make sure that your thread stays up out of the way. Now we're going to go back down, but we're going to go equal down from this stitch. Okay. And equal to this stitch. Okay. That's where the equality comes in. That's what makes it nice and even. So when you're doing this on your fabric, you have a couple of options. You can use this bottom line as your seam or the top line to guide you on your seam. All right, but then you'll want to take, this is where we want to come out at. So we want to take a small stitch. Okay, come back out. Go in and back out. Yep, and then I'm keeping this up, and we're going to pull through. Isn't that darling? I love this stitch. And it goes really fast once you get the hang of what you're doing. So I want to even with this stitch, even with that stitch. I'm going to come out here. So I'm going to take a small bite. And I'm counting because I'm making it even. I'm doing eight up and four across if you're wondering. But you don't have to do that. Okay, and then this time, see, I'm keeping the thread out of the way. I'm keeping it down, and I'm going to pull through, and we'll do it again. Oh, whoops, don't have to count. So we go even with this one, even with this one. That's where I wanted to come out. Okay, making sure everything's even. Keep this thread up and pull through. Do it again. Up. That's where I want to come in or come out at. Okay. So I'm going to take a small little bite. And we're going to come out where I wanted to come out at. Even with this, even with that. And pull through. That's all it is, guys. Okay, so the next step, I'm going to get off here and get the beads all ready. I'm going to show you about adding beads. We're going to put beads on this. I do have a couple of um, things that we're going to share with this. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, but I'll get back at you and we'll get some beads on here. I'll see you in just a sec. Got a new piece of thread here. I already have it pulled through. Got the knot on there and pulled it through. 
the first thing before we when we're going to add beads we're going to go up and do a, a stitch first we're going to go across this first stitch okay so again it was up eight that's what i'm using one two three four five six seven eight and then i want to go over four one two three four that's where i want to go in so that i can come out even steven with this stitch and we're going to pull through okay now this at this point we're going to go ahead and add the beads to our thread okay so i'm i you need to measure how many beads and these aren't going to lay correctly they because they're going to be on their side i know i can get two in here if you want more beads you have a couple of options uh, you can make the stitch longer and add more beads so instead of going eight, maybe you go 12 or 15 or whatever. Um, or you can use smaller beads. <laughs> Mine are number six because of the thread and the needles. Um, I haven't figured out how to get them on there with a different way. So I'm going to use two. That's the bottom line because I think I can fit two. So we're going to add them to our thread. Okay. Get them on there. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to come down, equal on this line, equal on this line. That's where I want to come out. So we're going to go over to take a small bite. Okay. Come out where we're supposed to. making sure everything's looking a-ok -okay. put this up out of the way and pull through boom oh I can fit another one look at that I'll try three next three's like a weird number though I'll leave two for now okay so we're gonna go up even Steven we're just gonna do a regular stitch now okay we'll go over to take a small bite Looks good. Pull it through. Boom. Trying to decide how I want my beads to lay. I think I like that. Okay. Because you have a couple of options. Maybe I'll try a third one. But okay, so here we've done a regular stitch, right? So now I don't think I went over far enough on that one, did I? I don't know. It looks good. Okay, I'm gonna try three just for giggles. You watch these beads won't work okay so i'm going to put three on here i mean this is my practice watch so you get to experiment you get to do whatever you want if you screw up it doesn't matter because well it doesn't matter anyway but um uh, this is a good place to experiment and say what if so we're going to come down equal to equal Making sure I'm straight. All right, and pull through. Yeah, look at that. Boom, three did fit. Now look, we're gonna go over. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna capture inside here, but you'll see here. Let me just show you first. I mean, I guess I could try and squeeze them if I really wanted to, but I don't think I do. So let's let me show you what I mean. Okay, so we're gonna go up one, two, three, four, come out making it even steaming. That doesn't look right. There we go. There we go. Okay, so then I'm gonna pull through and it naturally wants to come up, so I'm gonna let it go up. So it goes in between these two beads. And that's fine. It'll look cute. Oh, so at this point, we would add more beads, right? So I'll do it one more time. Got three more beads here. We'll do a th three. We'll see what that keeps looking like. What color? Do I don't know matter what color does it. We'll just put beads on. We're just putting beads on. We're having fun. All right. So we put the beads on at this point. 
pull them through. Okay. Now I'm going to come equal. I need to be able to see all my stitches. So I pull everything out of the way. Okay. Come out where I want it to come out. Make sure everything's up out of the way. And then we're just going to pull it through. I'm trying to keep my hands out of the way for you guys. It's kind of hard. All right. <clears throat> isn't that darling? Now, isn't this interesting? See, we can fuss with our stitches. I kind of like that. Or not. Well, we'll see. Okay, so we'll go up. Take one more bite because this one doesn't have the beads. For some reason it looks a little funny, but it's right. And we'll pull through. Now see, this one wants to go under, but I'm going to force it to go up so that it's looking the same as the other. But there we have it. I'm trying to decide. Do I want this one to come over, or do I want this one to go back? I think I'm going to have that one go back. There we go. So, there are our added beads. Super cute, right? I love this. Lots of fun, lots of fun. Okay, I've got another stitch for you. Um, actually, I got a couple of ways to, um, I guess, embellish this this actual stitch. So I'm gonna get everything set up for another clip here. So I'll see you in just a sec. Looking back, I realized I didn't end this one correctly and I didn't start this one right. So I'm just gonna do a really short version before I show you the next little fun thing. I have my needle here. I'm just gonna pull it up through any old place because we're not too concerned just have to have enough space okay so when you pull this up when you start it you want to go up however many you're going up I'm only going to do six this time go over to where you'd want to come out and then you would have to come over again okay then put it through Whoop. see I'm doing it again it's very easy okay because then you'll get the diagonal that you need when I showed you before I didn't give myself enough of a diagonal and then you can come I'm going to show you how to end it here but then you would come down and just do your regular herringbone stitch Pulling it through. I'm going to put three on the table here so that it makes a little more sense. Now, if I want to end it, we come down, right, normally, making sure we're even with this stitch, even with this stitch, and we would take a bite. So we would go over however much to make it, you know, a small bite. But instead of going in and coming back out, if you're going to end it, then you pull through. And that's how it is ended, okay? So I wanted to share that with you guys so that you knew how to i didn't start it correct i started correctly on this one now i didn't show you how i ended but that ain't right it ain't the end of the world this is my practice watch i didn't when i showed you when i started the beads that first stitch wasn't right because you want that angle so you go up to the distance that you want to go up you figure out where you want to come out at but then you have to back up and then go back in okay i just wanted to reiterate that okay so the next thing that we're going to do I will tell you you can use ribbon you can use different types of thread you can do whatever your imagination goes to but we're gonna weave I'm gonna weave this thread mine my stitches here are not very big 
So if I try to use an, even an eighth of an inch of a ribbon, it's going to cloud it up. So I, in my opinion, it'll be a little too, the, the thread's a little too wide. I'd need to make this wider and taller, and I might do that in the future. But I want to show you how to do this. Now I have loaded a tapestry needle, and if you remember, it's got a blunt end, so I'm not going to worry about shredding any of these stitches. Okay, and um, I've already loaded it. I've put an, a, a knot on it. Okay, I used a quilter's knot. The first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to come up at the base of the first stitch. And I don't want to come up in it. I want it to come up. See, this is one of the reasons a tapestry needle works really well because I don't have to worry about piercing that thread and shredding it which, you know, obviously I'm having a heck of a time here. Part of the pr problem is I'm not holding my stuff like I should. I'm trying to do this for you in camera. There we go. So I'm coming up next to it. I'm going to pull it through. Okay. Then we want to go underneath this first stitch. Okay. And we're going to pull this through. This was, this is really fun, guys. This is a lot of fun to do. And I want to make bigger uh, herringbone so I can do it with some ribbon. Then you're going to take your needle and go under the next stitch. And then you'll want to take and go the other direction. But you're always going under. And then back down this way. And I will tell you, I'm, I'm using, um, I'm not pulling really tight. And I would imagine that if you use ribbon, you won't have to pull very tight either. Now, see, this one looks a little loosey-goosey, so before I get too far, I'll just pull it a little more. But if you pull too tight, the stitch actually tightens as it goes, so you don't want to pull really, really tight. There you go. Under. Why does that not feel right? Because it wasn't. Now, just in case you do that, <laughs> how do we get out? How do we get out? <laughs> we want to go over. You always want to go over and under. So we're basically going over this stitch with our hand, but we're going under and up, over and down, making sure your thread stays out of the way. That's always fun to do that on camera. And go over and up, under and down, over and up. And even though my last stitch isn't correct, we're still going to finish it off. So I'm going to come through it first, okay? And then I'm going to go back into the hole where that stitch comes out and pull it through. And I, I can finish it off in the back. But isn't that fun? Now imagine if your herringbone stitches were bigger, you could pull the ribbon through instead of another piece of, th or whatever. You can pull anything you want through there. Um, and it just gives a, a really fun texture. Okay, I've got one more uh, thing to show you all, so I'll see you in just a sec. One last fun thing to add to the herringbone stitch. Now notice I'm gonna work with the red herringbone and I'm using blue thread if I do this on my own crazy quilt you know it's Christmas theme so I'm thinking about using a green and red but you can do whatever um, but it's just a little something something just to uh, add a little embellishment to the stitch so I have preloaded this blue thread and I have it pulled through it's actually one two stitches below equal to this side, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go across the middle and we're gonna make it even. So I'm just gonna put it straight back down through. Now, you know, in, in all honesty, I would sew the other direction. I feel like I need to be left-handed this way, but we'll go back the other way. So I went back down Again, it should be equal to that stitch. We're gonna come back up 
two stitches down and the reason I picked I say two counts, two holes. It's just to make it even across the X here, but I still want to be even. Here, let me pull it through. I still want to be even, even Steven through here. You know what? I'm going to flip this around because I can sew it a little different <laughs> as I'm right handed. All right, so yes, it is upside down, but what happens because I am right handed. I'm going to go in where I need to and come up again even with this first stitch where the X is and pull it through and I'll just go to the end okay see how much easier that is <laughs> instead of doing one stitch at a time now you can do one stitch at a time but this just makes it a lot easier. All right, I'm gonna do one more. And I am gonna go ahead and just go all the way in. And I wanna show you what that looks like. Isn't that just super cute? That is super cute, guys. Okay, so I'm gonna flip my fabric around again. <laughs> pull that note out of the way all right let me come back up on the bottom okay hopefully that's even and we'll go back the other direction Pretty simple. Pretty simple little embellishment that you can do. Okay. And I'll show you what it looks like here when I'm done. And then I'll have one more thing to add to it if I wanted to. This way it gives you some options. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and go down and keep it there and show you. Look how cute that is. Is that not the cutest thing you ever saw? Super cute. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back, but this time I'm gonna add like a cross to it. So I'm gonna come up in between my two stitches and again I'm gonna flip the fabric around here because I'm sewing backwards again and then I'm gonna go in the middle of the X but even with it and you'll just form a cute little cross I mean isn't that just the most darling yeah I'm super loving it okay so now I can go backwards now that you know what I'm doing Try to get this situated under the camera for you. All right, so I'm coming down in between the two and back up in between the X, top the top two stitches. It should be equal. And I'll come, I think that's equal. Just trying to make when you're doing this on your fabric okay you want to try and make sure that your these points down here are all the same these points all here are equal to all of those so that that helps you get the equality um you know the equalness of your stitching i'm only going to do two more so we can have the option of both being shown okay That one don't look right. I'm gonna to try to come up right in the middle of the stitch. There, I think that'll work. Yep, 
and then I'll go back down. This one was smaller for some reason. Not a big deal. All right, pull that through. So there you have it. You have the little X's. I'm gonna pull it up just a little bit for you so you can see a little closer. This one's a little smaller. <laughs> um, I must have miscounted. <laughs> But you can see we have the little, let me tune that in just a bit. Okay, so we have the crosses and then just the one stitch. So there are your differences. Isn't that fun? Which one's your favorite? Just out of curiosity, which one you like the best? And I mean out of all of them. So we've done the weaving, the crosses, single stitch to close it up, a regular chevron, we added beads. Man, we got it all done on this one. Super fun though, right? All right, guys, so I'm gonna show you my block and what I've done with the with the uh, herringbone stitch. So I'll see you in just a sec. Okay, so here she is, and I've been working on the same block because I kind of wanted to get all the seams done. And I still have two seams left, okay, before I start adding embellishments like buttons and jingle bells and more beads maybe in different places I'm um, thinking about doing something neat with this little guy in the middle so two more stitches and because the herringbone actually sat on one of the outside stitches I got a plan I can't wait to share with you but I want to be on an inside stitch so I don't have to worry about my quarter inch seam <laughs> so I just basically did a herringbone and I know it's hard for you to tell on camera but it's a dark blue with a green straight stitch tying it off at the top. And for the other side, I did do a dark green herringbone and I put a ribbon in it. Let me go ahead and try to clear this up. When I bring it up closer, it makes it go a little foggy. So I did end up putting a ribbon through it. And I will tell you, um, if you're gonna do that <laughs> in this method, don't do it on silk or something that will um, you know when you pierce the fabric it will put a nice hole in it and then keep going um, I see th silk possibly doing that uh, maybe it's not silk that I'm thinking of but just be careful with what kind of fabric if you have different fabrics inside of your um, what is this called crazy quilt so I just wanted to show you the the neat little uh, ribbon it did go through very nicely I love it so those are the only two I've done. I remember, I've got a lot of blocks, so we've got plenty of time to experiment, but I do have two more seams for this block before I'm ready to put more other stuff on it. So at any rate, there she is. Let me come back at you. I'll see you in just a sec. Okay, so there she is. Now I know I only did two herringbone stitches on this particular block, but man, have I got ideas. I just want to be more in the center like I talked about. So don't you worry, more to come with that. But also at 3 p.m. we do our live quilting and answers um, the day we drop a video. Uh, so I'll be here with you live quilting and answers is a live Q&A and I'll talk a little bit more about some of those ideas that I'm having and some more things that you can do with the herringbone stitch so that way, you know, you can let your inspiration guide you and we'll give you just a little food for thought right okay so we're going to do that today at li uh, live at 3 p.m eastern time because i'm here in virginia and we'll have more fun with it and then and then <laughs> next week is our cherub our live cherub chit chat uh, we do it the first wednesday of every month and uh, that's where we get to share well, I'll share with you some of my finishes if I have any that month, right? And maybe some progress reports. However, it's more geared towards what you're doing. This is an opportunity for the cherubs of the Halo community, which is you, uh, to share your progress on some of your uh, whips or works in progress. For those of you who are new, we call them whips. Um, any finishes that you may have, uh, any quilts that we, you just want to share for inspiration. Even with that progress, a lot of times we'll watch how people are making something and we'll still have a light bulb moment. Things just, sometimes you just see something and you get inspired, whether it's, whether it's the same quilt, because a lot of people will say, oh, I love that pattern, can I have it? 
or maybe your head goes somewhere else. And that's what our job is, is to inspire you. But on Cherub Chit Chat time, that's allowing your time to shine and give you the opportunity to inspire others. And there's so many wonderful quilters in here, so many brilliant, uh, creative individual quilters. And yeah, we look forward to Cherub Chit Chat. I know I do. I can't, I'm blown away with what y'all do. Um, so that will be three. Well, it is still 3 p.m., but I will actually be coming at you at 2 p.m. Central Time because I'll be coming at you from Kansas City. We can do that anywhere, right? So live chair chit chat is next week. I will tell you we're taking a small break. Now, it won't be 2023 before I come back pack at you with another stitch, okay? But 2023 is not the year. It'll still happen in 2022. We're just taking a small break because we've got other projects, other inspirations, and I'll be real with you, Christmas Wednesdays, start in September. So uh, for those of you who are new, I do a uh, Christmas Wednesday, one in September, one in October, one in November, and usually two in December. So five total between September and December, and they're all geared towards Christmas. Okay. So look forward to that. I'm looking forward to that. I can't wait to share the first one. I'm really, really excited. So, um, at any rate, we do have that. We have all, we've got more quilt projects. We've got a lot of stuff going on, guys. So I'll come back at you later with another stitch. But in the meantime, we'll just take a small break. Have some fun with it. Definitely share. Um, I'd love to see what your crazy quilts are doing. And um, yeah, we're going to go from there, guys. I'll see you today at 3 p.m. Eastern time as I am still here in Virginia for our live Q&A. And we'll talk about more about that herring stitch, herring bone stitch. Good grief. Have I been saying that wrong the whole time? I don't know. <laughs> but until next time, well, thank you guys for stopping by. But until next time, may you continue to be inspired, productive, ever so joyful, never stop believing, and never stop making your dreams in quilting come true. I love y'all. Happy quilting. Whoop, whoop. Happy hump day. Happy Wednesday. See y'all soon.